Om, Thom, Ban Thom. I don't know why that's hard for me to say, but it is. Ban Thom is an awesome dish from Northern Vietnam. I gotta say one of my favorite, probably. I don't see it on the street very often, in the south or in the central, but when I do, I always get it. I love it so much. Ban meaning fritter or cake, Thom meaning shrimp. So this is the shrimp fritter. The shrimp is fried together with julienne sweet potato. And it's always served with a very light, refreshing fish sauce, lots of pickles, lots of herbs, fresh rice noodle. And if you've ever had bún chà before, it's eaten in a very similar fashion. You're just using uh, the shrimp fritter instead of the grilled pork meat or the grilled meat. Let's make it. So I'm just going to tap the papaya with a knife all over, not too deep just to puncture the skin and then that's gonna release all the sap and I'll let it soak in this water to bring that out. So I'm just gonna cut these sweet potatoes. You can do this by hand or any way, I'm gonna use a mandolin. We'll see how this works out. Oops. Sometimes you get this and the potatoes are kind of smaller. That's a little thin. Let me see if I can get a little bit bigger. That seems pretty good. That's a nice thickness. Around there is fine. I'm just putting these sweet potatoes in some salted water. Alright, so this papaya has been soaking in the water for like 10 or 12 minutes or something. You could uh, do this the old school way or the classic way. They just kind of hit it with a knife like this and peel it. Then you kind of get a julienne kind of texture. But I don't think I'm going to use the mandolin. I want it to be thicker. Okay, that's a better thickness. I'm going to quickly pickle this and put some sugar in some. Some salt. So I'm just doing like a really light, quick pickle on this. And a little bit of uh, rice vinegar. Not much. So you don't always get cucumber with this. Probably pretty rarely actually, but I want it. And I don't have any other vegetables, so that's what I'm using. I'm going to cut a similar shape. I'll just remove some of the seeds. Actually thinking about how I'm going to be eating this, I'm going to cut this a little bit smaller. Normally this is going to be served with um, like pickled carrots and pickled green papaya or pickled carrots and, um, and uh, kohlrabi. But I don't have any kohlrabi. I don't have any carrots, so I'm just going to use the green papaya and the cucumber. So that's why I'm cutting it this way. Alright, I think I'm just going to use the one cucumber. The fish sauce for this is like a very, very light style. So I have a big old glass of water here. I'm going to add some fish sauce. I don't know the ratio for this. But it's mostly, it's a very, very light, light fish sauce. So fish sauce, sugar, vinegar. Alright, let's buzz it and we'll taste it. I'm going to do a little bit more sugar, not much, I'm pretty close already, and a little bit of fish sauce. That's probably good. So this should taste really light, a little bit of acidity, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of fish sauce, but mostly neutral. It's still very, very light, like you could, you could almost drink it. It's like a slightly acidic broth. Maybe about a cup of water to a tablespoon of sugar to a tablespoon of fish sauce to a half a tablespoon of vinegar would be a good place to start. I'm also going to add uh, some garlic to this. If, uh, I would also add chili to this right away, but my kids are eating it, so I'm not going to do that. I'll put the chili in my bowl. A little bit of garlic. And I don't mind getting a big old 
pump of garlic in there. Okay, so for the batter, I'm just gonna eyeball this. I'm putting one egg in. Now you can totally just use water here for a liquid. I'm gonna use some beer. I have it. People say it makes it more crispy. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'll try it. So I added about half a beer. Probably gonna need more. And then I'm just gonna use some bunsail flour, which is really, whoops, which is just rice flour, wheat flour. It has a little turmeric and onion powder in it too, so. But if you don't have that, you just use some wheat flour and throw some rice flour in it. That'll be fine. Or you can put some cornstarch in too, or some mung bean flour. Really, the wheat flour kind of gives you the body, and then the rice flour or mung bean flour or cornstarch just gives you a little bit extra crunch. I'm gonna dump everything in. This also has some dried green onion in it too. So this looks a little thin to me. I'm gonna get some more flour. So I'm just using what I got. I mean, so this is a, they call it a bokjin chui. So this is like for frying bananas. But again, this is just wheat flour, wheat flour, rice flour. This one has mung bean and cornstarch. So it has four different flours in it, but really it's not a big deal. Whatever you got will work. There's so many variations to this. The bigger, the more important thing is the consistency of the batter than exactly what flours you're using. They all work, they're all good. Now this looks better to me. It's definitely thinner than pancake batter. It still runs pretty easily. You could think maybe like a crepe batter if you're familiar with that, but any, anything around here will be fine. All right, so now I'm gonna strain my sweet potato. We'll add our sweet potatoes to our batter. Just try to get all the water off of them, okay. All right, and then we're gonna mix this up. And you just wanna, wanna coat these in the batter. If you feel like you don't have enough batter to coat them, just dump some flour in there, put a few drops of water in. Not a big deal, this is super easy. All right, that's cool. So there was some water left on the uh, sweet potato, so it, it thinned out the batter a little bit. Mm, I'm debating if I wanna add a little bit more flour. I think I'm going to, I'll add a little bit on there. If it gets too thick, it kinda gets more cakey than crunchy, so you wanna be careful about that. And you can always fry one or two off and then test it and then always add more flour to it. Or if it's too thick, you can always add more water to it. I mean, you can play around with that. You, you start cooking them and then you see how they work out. But now I think this is better. Now it's kind of coating them a little bit more. Okay, that looks cool to me. Okay, for this dish, you can use peeled shrimp if you want to. I do not like that. I have these little whole shrimp here. We just got the market today, so they're pretty fresh. You you can, if you want to, you can use a bigger shrimp and peel it or do whatever you want. But honestly, my favorite part of this is the fried shrimp shell. I love it, so I would never do that ever. This is for me, this is like the perfectly sized shrimp for this. I want it, to, I don't want them to be too big. I like them to be small. The shell is smaller and thinner. It'll get fry up really crispy. And this is like a, one of these is a good sized portion for one little cake or one little fritter. So let's get started. We're gonna start deep frying these. So you can use a ladle. I have like a little stir fry spatula here. We'll see how this works out with it. And we'll make like a little pile of the fritter. Kind of build that a little bit. You don't want it too thick. Something like that. You're kind of making like a little nest. And then you'll dip the shrimp in the batter, put it on top of the pancake, dip it in the oil, and let it sit a second and then try to brush it off. Nope. And then you can do a couple, as many as your pan can fit at a time. So I have a little draining rack. I'll pull the, when the stuff gets crispy, crispy I'll pull it off. So you can see the shrimp look nice and golden. Real crispy, that's perfect. All right, ready. So in my fish sauce that is super light and refreshing, I'm gonna just add some extra chili to it because I didn't put any in because of the kids. So this is just chili that's been chopped, it's been sitting in fish sauce, but I'm just gonna add some of the chili because I want the heat. And then normally inside the fish sauce will usually be carrot and green papaya or carrot and um, what's the other thing called? Kohlrabi. I don't have kohlrabi, so I'm gonna use a cucumber as my carrot and uh, the, the papaya I cut a little bit differently than you would normally see. So I'm just gonna add that as I go. So, this is very similar to eating buncha if you've ever had that before. You kinda have your main bowl of fish sauce and you just kinda keep throwing stuff into it. And, and uh, as, you, as you go through what you threw in the bowl, you just keep adding more. So 
I'm gonna put a lot of herbs in here and have some uh, nice green lettuce. The herbs don't always have to be the same, but what I have today is Thai basil, some red perilla, green perilla, and um, sawtooth coriander. I'll have Thai basil as well. Um, but if, I mean, ideally you want, you want to have at least three herbs. I know sometimes it can be hard to find these herbs depending on where you're living. But if you had cilantro, Thai basil, and one other, that would be cool. Or mint, you could use mint too. Mint can be easier to find. That would be good. But really, the more herbs, the better. I'm going to throw in some of this green uh, papaya that's slightly pickled. This is quite good now. And I have some fresh rice noodle. This is a bunnan. This is a thicker rice noodle, but whatever you have works. This happens to be fresh, but you could use dried and boiled it, whatever. And then we'll take our, our fritter now and just kind of throw it in. And you just sort of mix it up. That chili's hot though, but I do love it. To me, this is a good example of Vietnamese food or like one of the best parts about Vietnamese food to me is the balance and contrast. We have this heavy, crispy fritter and it's just sitting in this sweet kind of tangy fish sauce and there's so many herbs to balance out the heaviness. You have the acidity of the fish sauce to fight against the heaviness or, or complement it, however you want to view that. And then you have all the different uh, vegetable components as well to kind of bring lightness to the heaviness or to, to balance that as well too, it's so good. And you see, like, as I get through the bowl, I just keep adding more. Just keep bringing everything into the center of your bowl. But this is super light. Even though I'm eating basically french fries, it doesn't feel heavy at all. I could eat until I'm super full and not feel all weighed down. It's just great. Of course, if you want to go, like, semi-vegan, not quite vegan, um, you could do no shrimp and just a potato. That would be great. You could put tofu on instead. If you wanted to just take a different seafood route, you could use squid or you could use clam. That would be good as well. Lots of variations. I've never tried it using white potato and sweat a sweet potato, but I bet you that would work out well too. We're lucky enough to have this kind of butter lettuce around here that's really cheap and easy to get. And I think great. If you can't find that, you can use green leaf lettuce or red leaf lettuce. You could use romaine or iceberg if it's all you could find. That They would not be my first choice, but I would use it if that's all I could find. And even for the green papaya, if you couldn't find green papaya or kohlrabi, you could just use carrot or maybe even carrot and cabbage would work out all right too. You could make something work with whatever ingredients you found around you. If you never tried anything like this before, give it a shot, super good. If you like this and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe to the channel, shoot me a like. If you want to see me do bigger and better things, consider subscribing to the Patreon, that would be awesome. Anyway, have a great day.